Hello and welcome to Paris Set Me Free video tutorials, video critiques in this case. I'm looking at some photographs from Jane. Jane who came all the way from Rhode Island in the USA just to see me. And a little bit of Paris of course. And starting straight away with the one she took in a metro. She sent me six, she just could not decide. And uh, I'm going to see if I can do all six. If I can't I'll do two lots of three. How about that? So uh, Jane was uh, very nice to be with. We had a look at Montmartre. Um, let me see if I can find you Montmartre. Yep, it's up here of course. Here's Paris. And we investigated some of the 17th, well mainly the 18th. And actually where she was staying was very nice. It was in an apartment she had and it was just round the corner. It was round the back side of Montmartre if I uh, may put it that way. And I highly recommend you have a look. Uh, this is the main area with uh, Sacré-Cœur and, and all that. Uh, but if you go around the other side, you can actually find some interesting streets. And Jane showed me a little courtyard where she was staying, where I discovered some very nice turn-of-the-century or Art Nouveau designs on the walls and a hidden courtyard. You'd never know it was there, around about this uh, Avenue Junot which used to be part of what they call the, the Mecque, I think it was, when Montmartre was just a hill and it was covered in little shacks and people who, how could we put it, struggling artists and perhaps one or two thieves and that sort were all camped out on this hillside, which is no longer. But if you look in some old books, you can see pictures of them. Anyway, that's uh, me blah blahing on. Let's see what Jane has got to offer me. Here's one she took, and it was in the metro, of course. And there's a lot of metro stations which have their own particular style, their own design. And this one is no exception. They say that the train drivers can tell every single station at a glance just by its decor. And this is pretty distinctive. Look at these lovely red bucket uh, seats, reminiscent of some sort of wild 60s architecture or something. Probably isn't. I'm not very good on that. And here you can see the tunnel, ominous tunnel going into the distance, led in by these lines here. Look, that's the great thing about taking shots in the metro. You've always got lines. Look at that. Lines, curves going leading normally to a big black tunnel very spooky and here you can just about see it says on the top there probably something like Porte de Versailles uh, indicating the destination of the train so uh, can you can you see what that says there I'm not sure if you can catch the name of it there but uh, it's those colors are just absolutely stunning aren't they and she's thrown them down in the bottom the bottom right and you've almost got it's it's like it's expanding out at you or zooming into the picture this way and that's a very nice thing to do get down get close use a wide angle lens and although this is completely dominating this corner it leads that way and don't forget to have something interesting in the other corner otherwise uh, the picture may not be as strong all depends of course but in this case it works very well I think and metros, I must say, are one of my absolute favourite places to take pictures. And if you know my photographs, I think you know that. Now here's another one, which uh, Jane says was out the window in the apartment where my sister and I stayed. Well, I'm a little bit jealous actually. Look at that. Looking out of a beautiful little apartment onto a set of steps that you've even got a bicycle. I mean how about that? You've even got a bicycle up there and it's a nice shot captured that spontaneous moment quite prettily which is good and you should be snapping away. I think another thing Jane said was that uh, she after being with me she realized it was okay to take loads of shots and indeed you should because well, you can these days if you're on digital. It doesn't cost you any more. And uh, I have to say, a professional tech these days, technique these days is to take a lot of shots. Right, let's go down to the next one. A much darker scene, this one. And you can just about see the blur of a bike zooming across this zebra crossing, which is nicely uh, coming out towards us there with a little cafe in the background. She's waited for the bike, obviously, 
to give it a bit of action, which is nice, otherwise this would really have been a bit of an empty foreground and it needed that and she's got it. It's a very nice atmospheric shot. Look at the lights which at night you can see they're quite cold on the white here and yet quite warm in the cafe. Funny in daylight you see these walls here they probably be quite white and yet at night they all go yellowy. Jane says that this one uh, a scooter passing a restaurant where we ate uh, another attempt at adding movement so you see she was specifically working on adding movement to her shots and I recommend that you you experiment away uh, you never learn without practice get out there and do it that's what I say now here's another one BAM get those colors well this is an up and down one so you can't see it all that's what it looks like there we are I think you've almost got every colour under the rainbow there, haven't you? You've got... Uh, this is the ice cream shop, somewhere in Montmartre, she says. <laughs> uh, yeah, and look, there's a word saying it's Montmartre. How about that for uh, local colour, if you need it any more? And uh, what have we got? We've got limey citron green. You've got lovely orange, red, yellow, blue... Uh, about the only thing that's missing is purple unfortunately so a lovely tutti fruity shot and I think you were right to go for that um, maybe I would have twisted the camera even more you've twisted it slightly which uh, you can see the the lines there some uh, interesting diagonals um, when you do that uh, I don't know I tend to twist either crazily so people realize that I meant it to be at an angle or try and have it dead straight or if you are twisting it decide why I would say if you're going to give it an angle, make sure that all the lines are doing something in relation to the the frame. Uh, a slight tilt can sometimes look like you just couldn't get the camera straight. So, uh, so I do love people who play with angles, and I recommend they do. But uh, it's quite tricky to actually get the angle right. So I love that tutti fruitiness. Maybe could have had if we'd had people eating there. What would that have done to the shot? Would it have made it better, worse? I don't know. I'd have been inclined, can't do it on the video, to turn this, to twist it a bit more so that you actually had, uh, and, and maybe zoom in a bit, so you just had the entire frame filled with these structures and, and slats of wood and tabletops, making the entire thing, um, that, that colour, slots, slide, slots of colour against this greyness, and maybe that Montmartre is still in the background. Hey, who knows? It's all spur of the moment. Now let's go on to, I think I'll get all six in, maybe. Uh, look at this one. Wow. Check that out. Isn't that marvellous? Absolutely beautiful shot. And you know what? There's no bloody white bin, white, uh, white van there. You know, so often someone has the... Um, <clears throat> to park their big white van on this absolutely stunning scene and they haven't Whoa, hey! and you've got the sun coming towards you that's what that was misted out the entire street this is one of the most beautiful streets on Montmartre and uh, it's called uh, Rue de la Brevoire which means the old watering street the sun's coming towards us which means that look it's it's shining through this light it almost looks like the light is on and look at those beautiful shadows very excited about this shot I don't think I got one as good <laughs> and uh, you know it's the luck of the draw isn't it and uh, the shadows are brilliant the legs are apart I do like shadows where legs are apart because it shows you get this the shadow meeting and becoming one with the walkers and it's just absolutely fantastic it's a couple you've got one person lower than the other the the hair is high lit it's fabulous absolutely beautiful shot I'm jealous and uh, it's almost black and white although I bet you it isn't maybe maybe it is I don't know but uh, no, I don't think it is because look there's brown on her hair and yet look what happens when you've got this contre jour effect light behind ah uh, one more and she's going for movement won't have much to say about this because don't have much time going for movement lovely little girl getting excited on the the roundabout there and uh, it's a nice set of shots I hope to see more of them and uh, see you again in Montmartre Jane bye bye Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre, je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris...